Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how expert advice is not always the best advice. So just before I start this video, please consider subscribing to this channel, as most of you are not already subscribed, around 98% of you. So anyway, what is an expert? Well, an expert is defined as someone who has specialist knowledge in a certain field. For example, something that can be very specific, an expert in embroidered cotton. Now this means that this person could have spent a long period of time on their lives on this embroidered cotton. They know all the ins and outs of cotton. They know the retail prices. They know a lot of things about cotton. And this makes them an expert on this field. However, this is the definition of an expert, but in today's age, everyone is an expert in something. And let me tell you this, no one is an expert in everything. And the more things an expert claims to be an expert in, the less they really are. For example, I'm doing a PhD and I'm considered to be an expert in my field. However, I'm just a normal person and so is everyone else. Every expert is just another person. But because of other people's interest in them, they are considered expert and they are elevated and put onto a pedestal and everyone thinks that they will gain a lot more from this person because they are labelled expert. Generally, this is just not the case. Someone who is an expert in their field is just a normal person who has a lot of insight maybe in one particular field, but they feel like they can give advice to people and people would take this advice so strongly. So in this video, I'm going to give you a few reasons why you should not necessarily listen to an expert advice, especially when you want to start something. So the first reason why you shouldn't listen to an expert's advice is that they may be out of touch. So a lot of experts, especially experts in finance, in YouTube, are considered experts because of the financial gains or the audience gains they have. For example, someone who is a billionaire from investing or someone who is a millionaire subscribed YouTube channel, unlike me. So what this means is now they are labeled an expert because of how many eyes are on them or how much money. Money and people equate to a certain if someone has a lot of money or they have a lot of people watching them, they are somehow very interesting in terms of a lot of people watching them and then therefore they are put onto a pedestal like I said before. This goes with anything. A normal person can become famous from doing the most random thing and just because they have a huge following or and or money, they are now considered an expert or every word they say is considered special. But this just isn't the case. So for example, I was saying experts may be out of touch. What this means is that because these experts have gone through so much growth, even if it's overnight or even if it takes many, many years, their growth is something that you are looking to. Maybe that's why you need their advice, their expert advice on it. But because they've gone through this long journey, now they don't realize how hard it was to get to that position. And therefore their advice at the moment is something that they are giving from a standpoint of someone very high up and it's not very relatable for you. So a lot of times I watch some smaller YouTube channels who are giving advice on growth and even though they have not achieved growth or they are talking about certain things that they are not experts in, it feels more connected and I feel like I'm getting advice from someone who cares more about me instead of someone who has who is now out of touch with the audience base that are not so successful or don't have such a high audience base. The second reason why you should necessarily always listen to experts is the fact that experts have sometimes an ulterior motive. What this means is a lot of YouTubers or a lot of people in finance are giving out advice because they gain something from it. For example, smaller YouTubers are not earning any money off their videos. The advice they give is often because they want to give advice and they want to grow as a channel but not necessarily thinking about the monetary gains. For example, I would give advice on video regardless if I, I was ever being paid. And this is true because I'm not being paid by YouTube at all. But anyway, I feel like watching a lot of smaller YouTubers is more beneficial for me because the advice they give comes from their heart. While the advice that bigger YouTubers have, for example, if they've already achieved 20 million subscribers, they have so much money already that now they're just pushing out videos because they feel like they have to put out something to the audience or for monetary gain. And remember, when money is involved or when an ulterior motive is involved, you have to question what where the actual advice is coming from. One great example is something that I've recently been seeing a lot of because I've been more interested in investing. There's a trading platform called eToro, which if you want to try check out, please check out. I'm not going to link it. But it's a social network based trading platform where a lot of people give advice and the thing is the people giving the advice they have ulterior motives they're buying or selling a stock their advice influences their own money for example let's talk about dogecoin recently dogecoin has come onto the eToro platform which means that it has skyrocketed in value people that want to earn money 
want people to buy more into it. The more they buy into it, the higher the rate of Dogecoin goes up and the short sellers, so the ones that are in there for the short term investment, they can get a higher return. So them saying that Dogecoin is going up by 1000 million percent and please invest now because you're going to be a millionaire, they are giving you advice that helps them and not you because eventually that market will crash and they will benefit and you will lose. So remember, be careful where the advice is coming from. If it's financial advice, please get financial advice from a professional financial advisor, not from someone on the internet because you are very likely to lose out. I have a video on investing, please check that out, where I don't give any financial advice, but I say start investing now and invest for the long term. Please don't invest for a short term. Please don't actually get into the cryptocurrency craze because it will crash and it's all based on it crashing and uh, people losing out a lot of money. And the third reason why you would want to necessarily listen to an expert advice is the fact that I kind of mentioned before is no one really is an expert. Just because someone has a lot of money through investments or they have a YouTube channel talking to the camera doesn't make them an expert because really no one is an expert in such a broad field. Like I said, you might be an expert in something very specific like one toy or one YouTube niche, which is very, very specific. But when it comes to overall and when it comes to things that you might need advice for, such as relationships, love, marriage, etc., no one, absolutely no one is an expert. So please take their advice with a grain of salt and please notice or realise that the advice they're giving is very specific to them. And even if it seems quite general, you need to kind of caveat caveat that with a few things. Conversely, taking advice from someone who has a much smaller following sometimes often is more, like I said before, it's more comforting, it's more close, it's very personalised because they've gone through similar things that you have gone through. Which is kind of a double-edged sword because you want to listen to a new YouTuber who has very great things to offer in terms of advice, but they're but because they're giving good advice and other people follow them, then they become really big and then the advice kind of, you know, gets out of proportion. So it kind of is a double-edged sword. But the one thing that you can do is open yourself up to the idea of discovering new YouTubers. New discovery is always the way forward. You can't have the same YouTubers and advice givers, financial advisors for forever for 40 50 years no it doesn't work because things change new people come on and be open to the idea that things change things evolve and always open yourself up to that idea one great example that i give is in terms of companies and technology is blackberry and nokia or nokia however you want to say that those companies didn't want to change they didn't want to evolve they said no this is what people want they want the old fashioned way they want the physical keyboard no one wants a touch screen and eventually now no one even knows those companies anymore and they used to be the best. They used to be bigger than Apple, bigger than Sony, bigger than everyone. No one's an expert, but also be able to get your advice from different sources and be able to adapt and be able to go to people with a less of a following because their advice might actually be more suited to you as someone who is normal and someone who hasn't reached the heights that the experts are at. And that's it for this video for this for today if you enjoyed this video please let me know by comments please press like also if you've enjoyed this video and consider to subscribe if this kind of channel is what you're looking for a lot of advice phd stuff and videos on technology and as always thank you for watching